years ago when Kobe said he might have wanted out. That's long, long gone in our memories. It's a storybook season. It reads very well. So let's start at Chapter 1, opening night against a resurgent Portland Trailblazers. A team that I picked to do a lot better than they did. They got to the playoffs and ran into a tough Houston team. But this is going to be a team that we're going to keep our eye on over the next couple of years. But the Lakers started the season out with the victory. Remember when they were 17-2? and two? Everything was going so very, very well. Everybody knew their role, and people were talking about a 70-win season back then. Well, they were talking about an 82-win season. They were saying, <laughs> what's this team ever going to lose before they lost their first game? Very good team, a lot of pressure, a hell of a title to kind of keep on top of your head. Well, the 82-win season. The Christmas Day game, a, a little bit of revenge from last year's NBA Finals. Then... Cleveland came to town, and it was the LeBron-Kobe showdown. It was the LeBron-Kobe showdown. Cleveland had established itself as definitely the team to beat in the East, uh, battling Boston throughout the year. But the Lakers went and handled their business, and that was a great test for this team because we wanted to know how good this Laker team really was. Well, Andrew Bynum had arrived. He was playing the best basketball of his young career, and then Kobe ran into him, and down he went. And the season went into a bit of a question mark. And Andrew probably shouldn't play in Memphis over the next several years. But again, part of the controversy they had to deal with, Andrew goes down. Could, could Lamar handle coming off the bench? Just a lot of things they had to deal with. Kobe always knows the big stage. None brighter than MSG, Madison Square Garden, where he dropped a 61 on the Knicks. Then the Celtics came in with another winning streak, and the Lakers took care of business in the Garden. Again, that road trip was the road trip that was the big test for this team. They played against Boston, they played against Cleveland, Andrew Bynum went down, and they still had a successful trip. And Norman, it was about this time where Cleveland was emerging as maybe the team to beat. They had not lost at home, and the Lakers dealt them their first home loss. And they were the team to beat, and they had not lost at home until this victory by the Lakers. But again, Cleveland was establishing itself. They were on a nice roll, and for the Lakers to go in there to beat them the way that they did said a lot about the character of the team. Well, for the Lakers, their number one goal was clinching home court as uh, far as they could. They clinched the top spot in the West on March 27th against New Jersey. It was very hard to catch up with that Cleveland team. They, they, they were on a roll. They were playing extremely well, but the Lakers, again, did what they had to do in the West. 65 regular season wins, and they certainly li looked like they were rolling, although, of course, there were sometimes questions about their consistency, but no one could really complain about 65 wins. Chapter 2. We turned the page. The playoffs began, and for the second year in a row, here comes Utah. Lakers took care of business there. Absolutely. Utah is a very tough matchup for the Lakers. They play the type of basketball that the Lakers have, has not, they have not handled very well. They're a very physical team, one of the best point guards in the league, and Deron Williams. But again, the Lakers went in there, and they beat them pretty handily. Waiting, then, the Houston Rockets. What a crazy series. McGrady wasn't playing. Ming went out after a couple of games, yet plenty of blowouts in this series. There was still some nail-biting time for Laker fans because it went seven games. A resurgent Houston team, and they caught the momentum at the right time when the playoffs started. Again, the two things that are very, were very difficult for the Lakers, tough point guards and physical play. Houston brought both of those things to them and took them to seven games. Then the Denver Nuggets. This was a six-game series, and finally the Lakers seemed to wake up towards the end. It wasn't the team that seemed to lose interest at times. They seemed very focused towards the end against Chauncey, an old rival in company. Well, I think those two teams, Houston and Denver, were the two teams that prepared them for the finals. The Denver team bit into what George Call always wanted them to do, defense. You win by playing defense, and then Chauncey Billups, the leader of that team, that team played extremely well. The final chapter. Once again, the Lakers getting to the very end. Surprise, surprise. It wasn't Cleveland. It wasn't Boston. It was the resilient magic of Orlando. Well, you look at that series, it could have gone either way. You look at the lob pass and the lob shot that was missed. Then you look at the free throws by Howard. Some people say lucky, but lucky is when preparation meet opportunity. So they had the opportunity to win these games, and they did exactly what they needed to do. And, of course, legacies sealed in this one. Uh, Kobe Bryant, phenomenal. Derek Fisher, 0.4. How about two huge threes to seal a win? Two huge shots. The fourth championship for Kobe, one without Shaq. Ten for Phil Jackson to just 
continue to uh, add to his legendary status as a coach. This is where Laker fans believe they should always be holding trophies at the end of the season. A storybook season comes to an end, but we're writing a little bit of an addendum right now because the fans are here at the Coliseum and it's Laker Day in